Welcome to worship. Go ahead and take a deep breath in and out as we prepare for our time together. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light and our salvation. Amen. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us remember and give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family, Through the sea, you led your people, Israel, from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life Jesus Christ, shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let me see beauty that made his heart adore you, hope of a life spent with you. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray together. O O Lord Lord God, God, enliven and and preserve your church with your perpetual mercy. Without your help, we mortals will fail. Remove far from us everything that is harmful, and lead us toward all that gives life and salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. 
The first reading for today is from Ezekiel, the 33rd chapter, verses 7 to 11. So you, mortal, I have made a sentinel for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If I say to the wicked, O wicked ones, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity, but their blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked to turn from their ways, and they do not turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity, but you will have saved your life. Now you, mortal, say to the house of Israel, Thus you have said, Our transgressions and our sins weigh upon us, and we waste away because of them. How then can we live? Say to them, As I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from their ways and live. Turn back, turn back from your evil ways. For why will you die, O house of Israel? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Romans chapter 13, verses 8 to 14. Owe no one anything except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments... You shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone. The day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. The word of the Lord. Thanks be, be to, to God. God. The Gospel according to Matthew chapter 18. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, if another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly, I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from God, our Creator, Savior, and Comforter. These words from Matthew may be familiar to you. They appear in many places and even in many church constitutions as a method to be followed if there is a need to confront someone over an issue. These words can be useful in this way when conflict or serious behavioral problems arise. I'm interested in what more we can take from this teaching of Jesus. In her commentary on this reading, 
Audrey West writes, Jesus encourages the church to be a community that nurtures honest dialogue and refuses to keep silent in the face of behavior that harms others. She suggests that rather than a model for conflict resolution, our reading could be intended more to model how to walk alongside and protect those who are being disempowered or made vulnerable, enabling them to speak so that others might hear. There are deep issues of prejudice that can be at play in all kinds of congregations, but there are more ordinary things as well. I know people who have been hissed at by choir members who did not want them to join the choir. I've heard more than one tale of a person made so unwelcome in a church kitchen that they never volunteered again. And I once had an usher hit me in the arm when I was a guest singer in the congregation because our group wasn't going forward fast enough for communion. So far, Matthew 18 gives us a formula for dealing with conflict and points us to protecting the vulnerable. But notice the best scenario in the reading is two people talking and one regaining the other. This links us back to the parable of that lost sheep where one is regained by the others and is cause for great celebration. While working on this reading, I was thinking a lot about living in community. And I started to wonder what it might be like to live in a truly intentional community. A few years ago, at an education event, I met a single woman in her 60s who lives in a house with others her age. They choose to live as a group rather than in a retirement apartments or condos. They enjoy having company in the house together. They also save a lot of money and can then hire people to do things for them that are too difficult. My niece was invited to live in an intentional community by a Christian couple who bought a building that was originally a convent. One night a week is set aside for a shared meal and there are various expectations for living together. It's been a wonderful experience for her. I also looked up what others had to say about their own experiences living in intentional community. Ellie McBride said something that made me think of how the flock of 99 needed the one sheep to be complete. She said, as each new roommate moved their boxes, bed frames, and personalities into the house, a new energy emerged and seemed to fill some sort of void we hadn't even realized was there. When all, the, all, when all 12 of us were finally all together under one roof, our community was whole. Now we just had to keep it alive. We are called to confront one another, but the end goal is to keep the flock together. Dr. David Lowe's asks, what if Matthew's major concern isn't actually settling disputes, but creating an environment where Christ's presence continues to bring forgiveness, healing, and joy? Community does not just happen when a group of people are connected. It takes commitment and intentional nurture to maintain. Listening seems to be a central part of the work. Jesus guides us to talk directly to a person and see if they will listen. And if that doesn't work, we're to bring along a couple more people to help us communicate and to witness what is said. I've talked more about some of the things that are hard, but it is all to get us to some of the good stuff. Listen to what two individuals had to say about their experience in living in community. George Sawyer had spent 20 plus years living in a few different intentional living communities. He said living in a group can be far more fun than alone or as a family. The other people are like moving mirrors that allow you to see yourself reflected back from every angle. This provides unparalleled opportunities for personal growth. He also said, there's an old Buddhist saying something like, put a bunch of pebbles into a bag, and as you walk, they will rub each other smooth. Ellie McBride wrote, three years ago, 
I never would have thought I'd end up sharing a house called Agape with 13 other people. I've always been a little protective of my personal space and often enjoy the comfort of characters in movies more than those in real life. But now, that protectiveness I felt for myself, I feel for my community. The guard that I held up for so long broke with the weight of compassion exuding from everyone around me. What could this mean for Christian community? Working together for reconciliation creates a special kind of unity. Jesus said, again, I assure you that if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, then my Father who is in heaven will do it for you. When that seed of unity is planted in the soil of confession and forgiveness, God promises to be present in ways that will move heaven and earth. Seeking agreement with others in the community is not a formula to force God's hand to grant us what we want, but instead is the promise that when Christians come together to discuss listen for and discern God's will, nothing is out of our reach. And the assurance of Jesus' presence is both a reminder that what we say and do together is always said and done in the presence of our Lord, and a promise that the hard work to which we set ourselves is not done alone, but always with Jesus' presence and assistance. Amen. Drawn together in the compassion of God, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Unite your church, O God. Grant us the gift of repentance and reconciliation. Bless the cooperative work of congregations within our communities. Strengthen ecumenical partnerships. Guide us in our shared mission to embody your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. 
Protect your creation, O God. Teach us ways that do not harm which you have entrusted to our care. Renew and enliven places suffering from drought, flood, storms, or pollution. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Turn nations and leaders from ways that lead to violence and death. Shape new paths toward peace and cooperation, teaching us to recognize one another as neighbors. Guide legislators, civil servants, judges, and police toward laws that protect and serve the well-being of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Tend to all in need of your compassion. Hear the cries of those awaiting justice and those yearning for forgiveness. Give community to the lonely and neighbors to the outcast. Shelter all who are vulnerable in body, mind, or spirit, especially all those who are dealing with COVID-19 infections or who have lost loved ones because of this disease. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sustain us in our work, O God, and give work to those who need it. Shape societies to ensure fair treatment for all who labor. Help us to love our neighbors in and through our work. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We remember with thanksgiving those who have died in faith. As you equip them, equip us with your protection and power until with them we see your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always and also with you in response to the goodness of God we respond by offering gifts to God for the good of God's creation thank you to those of you who have been mailing in offerings dropping them off at church and using online means to financially support the mission and ministry of your congregation Thank you also for the many and abundant ways you're responding to needs in the larger community, using time, talents, and energies to bring blessing to those around you. Let us pray together. God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours, and your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. All that we have are signs of your abundant grace. Nourish us through the gifts you have given us, that we might proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. Receive the blessing. God, our creator, Jesus our Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, our Sustainer. Bless us and keep us in eternal love. Amen. Is your name in all the earth? Oh Lord, oh Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth? Oh Lord, we praise your name. Oh Lord, we magnify your name. Prince of peace, mighty God. Oh Lord, God Almighty. Oh, Lord. 
Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. Hey, thanks for watching this video. Be sure to give us a like and even a comment. And please, please, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel.